Thank you for having me here. It's uh, it's great to cross the county line every once in a while, you know, get, get a little different uh, fresh air out here in the country. It's wonderful they let you in still. Isn't that nice? Well, they let me out. <laughs> well, let, that's another question. We'll see. When does your visa expire? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will have uh, two minutes for opening statements. We'll reverse the order at the end. Uh, Jacob, you'll go first on the opening statements, and then we'll reverse that toward the end when we do the closing statements. And uh, otherwise, as we continue along, you'll have uh, two minutes to answer the questions if you need the full two minutes. If you feel the question is something that requires a bit more depth, uh, just let us know. You might need more time. We'll do our best to accommodate that uh, if it becomes necessary. If your name is invoked by your opponent in one of their responses, you have the right to directly reply. Uh, please wait till after that person has concluded their statement and then raise your hand a little bit to know, let us know that you want a direct response. We'll call on you to give you the opportunity uh, for that direct response. Now, with uh, opening statements, Jacob Harris, you're first. Hello, everyone. My name is Jacob Harris, and I'm running for Jefferson County Commission, Charlestown District. I am first and foremost a servant of the people of Jefferson County, having served the Jefferson County Emergency Services Agency Board, and I am now serving on the Jefferson County Board of Zoning and Appeals. I am a family man, a proud U.S. Army veteran, an active member of our community, and I am a son of Appalachia. I stand for conservative values such as property rights, the Second Amendment, transparency, small business, and limited government. I am 100% self-funded. I accept no donations from anyone. I have just recently turned down donations from developers, companies, and other politicians who would support me. I made this choice because the people of my county deserve representation that is not bought and paid for by the highest bidder. My platform and my views are my own and will not be swayed by the hands of greed. I disavow prejudice and hate in all its forms. I condemn those who would ally themselves and condone racism and bigotry. In all of these forums, I hear candidates discussing so many problems, complaining after complaining, but never offering any real plans or solutions. So here today, I would like to make some deliverable pledges to the people of Jefferson County that would address some of these issues and to which they can hold me accountable for my record here. I pledge that if I am elected, I will introduce two separate ordinance. The first ordinance would require the tracking of every single tax dollar being spent in this county to the last cent, as well as, <coughs> the <coughs> as, well as every single vote made by representatives to ensure that our citizens can track their tax dollars and ensure that they are being represented accurately. The second ordinance would reinstate development building impact fees in the county to their previous levels with a required annual reevaluation. This will allow funding for our infrastructure, emergency services, and schools to ensure our community can keep up with the hyper growth that we are seeing. Through this vehicle, we can ensure true responsible growth paid for by the organizations that are fueling that said growth. I would see Jefferson County into an unprecedented era of peace and prosperity. We are the shining city on the hill, and we are the jewel of West Virginia. Please make your voices heard and vote for common sense and decency. Vote for Jacob Harris on May 14th, May 1st and 11th for the early voters. Thank you, Jake. Jack Evaste. Hello. Uh, thanks again for having us here. Um, I'm running for Jefferson County Commission because I do not have a special interest. I pledge to be an advocate for the benefit of all residents and not for a privileged few. My motive is to improve conditions in Jefferson County and not to enrich myself. In fact, I have pledged that my entire salary will be donated to nonprofit organizations, most of them local. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of worthy people that need a little extra money here in the county, in Jefferson County, and I want to be one of their supporters. I'm a long-term resident of Jefferson County with a personal history of volunteerism. I've lived here 18 years in Jefferson County, and uh, with that said, it could actually be considered 20 if you consider when we put money down on a house. Uh, that was supposed to be built in 90 days, and it turned out to be built in a year and a half. So uh, you know the, how the uh, developers may stretch the truth just a little bit. Uh, I'm a retired U.S. Navy captain 
with uh, 25 uh, years honorable service, I would say distinguished service. Uh, I got a lot of primo assignments while I was in the Navy, executive officer of uh, five straight years at the Office of Naval Intelligence, and I was commanding officer at uh, NCIS for my last two years. So I uh, have a good, good record, good background, and making uh, Captain 06, uh, which is equivalent to a full bird colonel in the other services, is a pretty good benchmark of what I can do. I've also been a, uh, a long-term employee of Lockheed Martin uh, for around 33 years. I worked for some other aerospace companies. I'm happy to report that nothing that I ever worked on ever blew up. It was all pretty passive, scientific, um, and a lot of the stuff, well, I would call it national defense oriented. Uh, the last places I was uh, stationed, they did a lot of uh, computer oriented stuff to, to track the bad guys. So anyway, uh, I, I'm here. I, wanna, I want this seat. I've been following county commission for a long time, and uh, I hope to, we have some good uh, issues oriented questions. Thanks. Thank you, Jack Efeste. And now with the first of our questions, Steve Pearson. Okay. Um, welcome, gentlemen. So um, for the benefit of our audience listening, uh, I wanted to talk, ask you some questions about pilots and TIFs. So, you know, the Rockwell Insulation Factory uh, requested a, tip, a, a pilot when it first came to the county. Uh, the Hilltop House uh, Hotel Project in Harpers Ferry is asking for a tax increment financing district. It's essentially, you know, collecting tax dollars generated by that to fund the development of the project. At least one of the solar, uh, industrial solar projects has talked about asking for a pilot. So what are your opinions of pilots and TIFs? And who goes first? Start first with Jack. Okay. All right. That's a pretty easy question for me. I oppose pilots uh, agreements because typically what they do is just offer uh, tax breaks, tax incentives to people coming into the county. I might support one if it was a really, really beneficial uh, uh, project that was coming into the county and was going to bring a lot of clean energy, uh, clean, uh, clean business uh, the, to the uh, county. Uh, as far as the TIF is concerned, um, I, I did not like the TIF, uh, regardless of what I think about uh, the Hilltop House. I think that they got too many tax breaks, and basically they, they pay back uh, – Pretty much they pay back the loan before they pay the county anything. So the county's not getting anything. Uh, you mentioned Rockwool, um, which is pretty interesting because the county commission unanimously, along with everybody else that, that approves uh, uh, those kind of uh, deals, voted yes. And then it became a hot uh, topic. The interesting thing is Rockwool um, is not – really in the scope of Jefferson County Commission. It was a Ranson project. Uh, the objection I had to it was is it was down in open territory. I think it should have been closer to Ranson. Uh, that's where they should have built the plant. Uh, every time I drive past there, I, I look at it to see if it's hurling and spewing uh, bad chemicals. Most of the time, it's not. and. They've been called smokestacks, but they're actually vapor stacks. And I think if there were any problem with uh, them environmentally, uh, our environmentally conscious friends would be out there uh, protesting all the time. So. Jacob? Sure. So for solar specifically and, and any company coming into this uh, county, I oppose absolutely 100% um, pilot agreements. I don't believe they're beneficial to this county. Our, our county is already underfunded. Our EMS is horribly underfunded. We rely overwhelmingly on volunteers, and honestly, it's, it's terrifying. I served on the JCESA board as a citizen's representative for two years. I've seen firsthand what this stuff does, and, and thank God we do have our servicemen, the, the, the volunteer, because if they decide not to, we have people that could very easily, I mean, they will die. And that, that's just as, as simple as it gets. Um, now. Companies coming in, we need those tax dollars up front, 100%. I mean, that's just all it is to it. We need tax dollars. We need jobs. We need good-paying jobs. 
that will allow our citizens to work within Jefferson County so that my kids, my grandkids, aren't traveling two hours one way, one hour one way, or, or God forbid, moving uh, clear across you know, state lines or, or wherever they got to go. I want a Jefferson County that our kids and grandkids and their kids after them can grow up in and prosper. Now, for the TIF on the um, Hilltop House, I actually did not have a problem with this TIF um, because the way it is set up, they, they are paying for it out of their, their own money, and, and yes, we won't see it now, but the benefit to that area in Harpers Ferry far outweighs any of that. I mean, it, it, the tax dollars that will be brought in by, by, by boosting this up, by, by, that is a boon to our community. We will now have a place for people to go. I mean, you've, you've all been to Harpers Ferry at some point in your lives, I'm certain. It is jam-packed. And, and there's nowhere to park. There's nowhere to go. And if we can get more tax dollars coming into this county, because, I mean, you see it. I mean, people come from Maryland. People come from Pennsylvania. That's great. They're coming in and pumping tax dollars into our local community. And if we have that kind of funding and that kind of boon, we continue to be the jewel and we continue to prosper. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. John Gilstrom. <laughs> All right, you both opened the same door in your opening statement, and I, I, I got to walk through it. Um, I believe, Jacob, you were the one who was not bought and paid for, and I believe, Jack, you were the one who is not uh, about special interests, and um, you represent not a special few. Uh, decode that for us. Uh, what were you talking about? I guess we'll start. Whose turn is it? Is we'll it? Start with Jacob. Jacob. Yes, sir. Uh, well, for me, um, I made the choice uh, when I decided to run that I was going to run this campaign my way. I was not going to be influenced by anyone. There's a spike in Jefferson County straight through the heart of my party. I want to know part of it. I want to run on me. I want to run for the people of Jefferson County. So I chose to announce that I would not be accepting any donations. And the recent campaign finance reports that we uh, had to put in um, on the 8th of April uh, reflect that. You will see that I've accepted not a single dime from anyone. I self-fund my entire campaign from my own pocket, from my own salary funded. I work as a recruiter, and that's the, and I, I use, uh, to be honest, I use my bonus money this year to fund some of that. So, um, and, and I have spent roughly about thirty-five to four, $4,000 on this campaign. Some of my um, uh, opponents on the other side, not, not just Jack, but others, have spent two to three times that. And, and as fiscal conservative, I, I was able to kind of look around, get the best price for things, and, and make stuff happen. So um, I want voters to have someone in office that does not have a puppet hand on top of them. I want voters to see somebody that is willing to work for them. I stand for what I stand for. It won't be bought and paid. You may agree, you may not agree, and we may not always uh, uh, get along, and that's okay. But I stand by my platform and my views. Thank you very much. Jack? Oh, that's pretty interesting. I commend uh, Jacob for self-funding. I did that uh, the last time I ran, and what I found was is that a lot of people like to make small donations and commit themselves uh, to a person's campaign. So this time I allowed uh, people to uh, donate to me. Uh, anybody who runs for an office uh, these days has to pretty much self-fund. But I have not accepted any money from uh, large corporations, big business, uh, no deals. Most of the, in fact, I would say all of the donations I have seen have been written checks handed to me personally and by people that I've known for a very, very long time. Uh, I recently got a couple very, very key endorsements from uh, Jefferson County people that I want to work with for the benefit of the county. Uh, Alex Mooney, I'm very, very pleased to, to announce that he has endorsed me. He's a long friend of, uh, of, of mine. I'm also getting an endorsement from Riley Moore, uh, Kent Leonard, uh, Bill Reidenauer, who's a delegate. Other people of, uh, are, are planning to endorse me, and that's good, but it's not a tit for tat. I'm only accepting endorsements from people that I feel are honorable and that I agree with. Uh, feel free to check my financial statement. You can see pretty clearly that uh, I have uh, 
I am essentially self-financing uh, also, but I do accept do donations on a small level. So, you have a follow up, John? No, I, I was I was thinking there was a veiled accusation in there about others, no, and there was not. Man. Okay, all righty. Steve Pearson, or maybe more concerned. Would yes. Be, you know, yeah. No, better way to describe it. Um, well, let's talk about ambulance services because the county commission has spent a lot of time over the last uh, two and a half years talking about ambulance services. So the uh, Captain Sign, the director of the uh, EMS services, recently presented a plan for you know, addressing some of the concerns that the county and citizens have about expanding service. And he talked about three different, uh, three new stations. Um, so the question would be is, do you support the expansion of the ambulance services? Do you think it's necessary? And if you do, how would you fund this expansion? Because the numbers he threw out were annual operating costs, about a half million dollars to do a 24-7 staffing of, of a new ambulance service, not uh, above and beyond any of the you know, equipment purchases that would be required. So I think this one goes to Mr. Jack. Day, right? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, I was not happy with uh, ambulances being pulled from Middle Way and the mountain in particular. Um, if you've ever driven out to the mountain, and I have many, many times, it's a little hard to get out there quickly. Uh, it's a lot of... Uh, I would call it uh, probably one of the most pure, beautiful and interesting rural areas, but it's not conducive uh, to uh, quick uh, traffic, small roads, not wide. Um, so I'm concerned about people in the mountain. Uh, as far as Middleway, I've, uh, I've actually been loosely affiliated with the Middleway uh, Fire Department, department uh, and I was, I was not happy about the Middleway ambulance being pulled. Uh, that was a, a bad deal in my mind uh, when they, my opinion was is when they did the, uh, when they bought into getting someone to do a study for them, they already had an answer and they were just looking for somebody to give them uh, a backup for what they do. Uh, if I'm elected county commissioner, I would like to see the ambulances returned, particularly to, to the mountain. And, and to uh, middle way. Uh, now, uh, response times have gone down, but that's because the centralized areas are getting very, very quick response, and the people out in the hinterland are not getting a quick response. So uh, it, is a, it is a money problem, and I'm glad you brought that up, but the deal I, uh, I see is that we have a lot of money that we allocate uh, every year on the county commission, and the number one priority should be fire, ambulance, and police. The others fall in based on their need and what they're doing also to help themselves. So I'd like to institute a different approach to the funding. Uh, when somebody comes before us and says, I want X number of dollars, my question is, what are you doing to self-fund yourself? And what services are you providing to the community? I think that's very important as we go down the line. Follow up, Steve. Uh, do you want to let Mr. Harris answer oh, first? Oh, I'm sorry, I missed. Yes. Yeah, my bad. Okay. So, um, when the uh, Fitch report came out and the transition happened to a, a county uh, department, I was actually on the JCESA board at the time, and it was very contentious. Um, and and you know, I I think that the county had, I would say, some probably had noble intention. I think that the effects of that. Are dangerous I think I believe uh, in, in my heart and what I saw numbers wise coming through our board was that uh, there are people in this county and this has not changed uh, this this was back in 22 but this is uh, as I as I checked it still the case there are people in this county that cannot receive an adequate response time meaning there are people on that mountain and in middle way that could very well die I mean that I, the, the basic the basic responsibility of a county government, or any government for that matter, should be to ensure the basic safety of its citizens. Um, that said, if I'm elected, I, 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 I would absolutely see ambulances return to those two areas. Um, you mentioned Captain Sign. I was actually on the appointment board for Captain Sign on the committee from the JCSA board. Um, and, and what I found was he had overwhelming support from the officers of the uh, ESA and from uh, the people that are on the ground working. I, I found him to, to be 
fighting tooth and nail to try to try to do good by this county. Um, now, I believe the last part of your question was referencing how would we fund such a thing. Um, so first off, I want to I want to unpack that a little bit because as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are overwhelmingly relying on volunteers, and if they if they decide, hey, I want to make some money in uh, Loudoun County, which they pay considerably more, I want to make some money in, in Frederick. Um, we're just out of luck. And, and I remember we were trying to find people, and, and I was on a recruiting committee for them, and they couldn't find anybody. It was almost impossible. They would get one or two here and there, thank God, sons of the county who, who were legacies, basically. Um, now, funding-wise, I believe that what I mentioned earlier on the impact fees should go directly to EMS because EMS and fire need to be able to keep up with all these new builds coming in. So if we were to increase those impact fees to their previous levels, we would very easily be, able, well, we wouldn't get rid of it all, but we would very easily be able to offset some of this damage done. So, um, if, and, and to that point, I would also see a reevaluation every single year so that we can, I don't want to say stop growth, growth is good, but we need to make sure it's responsible growth. If our infrastructure and schools can't keep up, we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot here. So if we evaluate it every single year and determine what we, we need to do that year, then we can, we can keep up, we can evolve, we can be proactive versus reactive. What we have now is reactive governance in a situation that is harming uh, the mountain and middle way. Now, Steve, do you have a follow-up? Yes. So, um, you know, we, we covered a lot of ground in the, in the funding process. I think like both of you gentlemen agreeing that, you know, we need more ambulances um, and we need to be better serving the, the, the people. Um, obviously, one uh, quick or direct funding source for the ambulance service is the ambulance fee. So would you support an increase in the ambulance fee? So to, to my knowledge, um, there's no plans for an increase on the ambulance fee. What I have seen go around is a potential fire levy um, coming around. Now, to be clear, my answer to that is I, I absolutely think an increase to anybody's taxes should be the last resort, 100%. Um, that said, the safety of our citizens is first. So. We can fight this first by recruiting businesses in, getting more tax dollars, by increasing the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the impact fees, and that should alleviate some of that pressure. If, as a very last resort, we still have citizens who can't get adequate service, then potentially yes. But I will say the numbers that I have seen coming from the fire and, and when I was on the board, they, they did, when they presented this first to us at the JCSA board, they told us, we don't think we're going to get this. We're just asking for a lot more than, um, and hoping you guys give us some. So I, I would potentially support that, but nowhere near at the levels of, of what they're asking for and only as the absolute last resort. You're talking about the levy. The I'm fire, talking about the levy, the yes. The fire levy. And, and we offset that with the um, impact fees as well. Okay. Mr. Hefferstein. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, as I recall, the ambulance fee was kind of misnamed because it was really um, monies that were put forth uh, to train uh, a specialists uh, and bring them to the county basically to work ambulances. And uh, I, I was not in favor of uh, that, uh, that fee because I thought that the uh, ambulance, fire, and police – all of our EMS people should be funded out of the general fund. There shouldn't be an extra uh, tax on anybody. And it's a tax. You can call it a fee, but it's a tax. Uh, it has been reduced over the years. As far as impact fees are concerned, uh, I, uh, I think the impact fees should be levied on new uh, people coming into the, the county, uh, builders, uh, and uh, any new business that's coming in should be paying uh, more than their fair share, or at least their fair share of uh, of whatever the uh, the impact fee should be. As as far as returning it to to old levies, I would like to look at that carefully because we don't want to discourage good businesses from coming here and and investing in Jefferson County and bringing good jobs. But with that said. If you're talking about uh, 
housing developments, um, I, I think they we should probably be paying uh, more than their fair share because the long-term effects of the housing with uh, negative on infrastructure, uh, burdens on our schools, other areas, the impact fees should be high. We're going to move now to uh, closing statements, and Jack, you'll go first on closing statements. Try to keep them between one and two minutes. All right. Uh, thank you again, once again, for having us here. Uh, I'm glad we could have an issues-oriented forum here. Um, uh, I, like I say, I'm a long-term resident here. I've been involved in the county. I've served on a couple uh, specialist uh, boards uh, for the county uh, at no cost. Um, while serving, um, I have uh, very, very close to pers perfect attendance. Uh, there was one meeting I met missed when I was with the Historic Landmarks Commission. I was I was out of state, but I sent my financial report in before the meeting. I couldn't get internet connection, but uh, I've never had to recuse myself from any board that I sit on. I don't have any uh, special interests in the county. I I don't like that people serve on these boards that do have special interests and have to recuse themselves. I've also done things like I've been a long-term member of the Eastern Panhandle Business Association, a West Virginia Citizens Defense League. I am a life member of uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars, and I'm also a member of the local American Legion. Uh, I get involved any place I can in any place that can use my talents, uh, even at some point, I was like, uh, for six and a half years, I was a treasurer of a homeowners association and helped balance the books and uh, take care of the neighborhood. Uh, but that's basically uh, my mentality, and my whole life has been a, a case of volunteerism. And uh, so anyway, if you're, uh, if you're interested or you have a question, feel free to, to contact me. My website is hefestate.com, and there's a telephone number in there that you can call me. Or you can send me an email. Take care, and thanks again. Thank you, Jack Hefeste. And now Jacob Harris. So today I basically put it to you that I have actual solutions and deliverables that I've pledged to the community. Those are things that I'm saying here on the radio and have said on the record in the paper. Um, I will act absolutely be held accountable for those, those pledges. I want to reiterate that I am first and foremost a servant of the people of Jefferson County. I'm a family man, a proud U.S. Army veteran, an active member of my community, and a proud son of Appalachia. I stand for conservative values such as property rights, the Second Amendment, small business, limited government, and the American way of life. Again, I'm 100% self-funded, and I would just reiterate my ordinances that I've pledged. The first ordinance would track every single tax dollar to the last cent and track every vote in this county. The second ordinance would reinstate impact fees and require reevaluation. And I, I'll be honest, it's the first forum I've had that Solar didn't come up, but I actually had a third pledge that I was going to make right now. Um, the issue that we have uh, is that, you know, Solar was pushed through uh, over a, a period from 2020 to 2022, where the Planning Commission and the County Commission fought court battle after court battle. We're stuck with these guys now. So it's left to the rest of us coming in to pick up the pieces and do the right thing. We need to protect our citizens and we need to protect property values. Our sacred property rights cannot go unprotected. So here today, I offer you a common sense solution to solar in our community. I pledge today that within my first three months in the county commission, if elected, that I would introduce an ordinance that would require a reevaluation of the solar text amendment and require new increased buffer zones to include adequate foliage that fully hides these farms from sight, proper landscaping, and a fully funded safety disaster plan. This would mitigate the damage done and ensure neighboring properties are unencumbered and safe. I believe that is the most common sense solution we can make right now. <clears throat> that said, my name is Jacob Harris. I stand for conservative values in this county. Vote for common sense and decency. Vote Jacob Harris on May 14th, May the, May the 1st, and May the 11th for the early voters. Thank you very much, and I'm proud to serve for the Jefferson County people. Thank you, Jacob Harris. Jack Hefeste, I know you wanted to say something, but we're out of time. We've concluded just very quickly. Time I'm a long-term uh, non 
a supporter of solar, and uh, that has gotten me a lot of pushback on, in the county, yeah. but it's also gotten me a lot of support. We figured that both of you have talked about solar often I'm enough. i you didn't uh, bring up solar. Uh, I, I just had yeah. the, the, the pledge ready to go. I saw, that was the yeah. thing. I, only, I wasn't even going to bring it up. But I was like, man, I, yeah. Hey, thank you both uh, very much. Best of luck to you in the upcoming election. And uh, we will be back in four minutes with candidates from the Middleway District, Michael Mood and Matt.